Smith and Craig H. 4 8. I can take the glasses off for you too if you want to. <laughs> That's how I play when I'm drunk. Or when I'm short stack. <laughs> I missed that yeah. part. your suitcase in the poker room? I don't know where I left it. <laughs> and when I'm playing tournament, the floor comes in. Ah, is this, is this your suitcase? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So me and Alice are still here at Whataburger. We are uh, reviewing some of her tournament hands from today. And she had a couple of interesting cash game hands that she played in the 510 and 51020 uh, last weekend and I think we got a little bit of video footage of one of them and I think she wanted to review them for you now so go ahead and tell us about it. I break even last weekend in 510. 510 and 51020 in two days. The first day Friday um, I stuck 2500 first uh, half an hour. One hand I really stuck is it's 51020 um, cutoff is a very spewy and uh, he he drinks a lot on the table. He called twenty bucks. Cutoff. I had aces, small blind. I raised to one twenty. I know he will call. I think I should raise two hundred. He will still call. Okay, I raised one twenty. I run false to him. He call. The pot is two seventy five. Flop comes. Jack seven, Jack seven three, Jack seven spade. I have a spade, so uh, I'll see that for sure. I'm thinking is how much I should see that and, and uh, like it's possible he had nothing. I see that very big. He just four. I decided to see that a little smaller than normal size. I see that one twenty into two seventy five. And he's very spooky. He probably blocked me because he think I bet very small. I had probably had a ace king. 
if he wants to make a move, it's possible. So I bet 120 to 275. He, he shall fall in 1600. I can take the glasses off for you too, if you want to. <laughs> That's how I play when I'm drunk. So against his range, he has this player has a jack seven, jack three, three seven in his range. I'm not surprised at all. He's that type of player, but he has some random flops in his range because I bet a little small on the flop. He has all the spade in his range. He will do the same way because he did the same way before. When two spade, he had his king spade and he just shoveled in 2000 into 300 pot. So he's just this type of person. There's no way you can fold aces here, so I call and I wait. He had a nine spade. That's a pretty good hand. I want to talk about, about calling range here. And it, Definitely the aces we should call, kings we should call, queens we should call, and I think the best calling hand is jacks for sure. And the next best hand is ace jack. Ace jack is better than aces because we block a lot of two pairs, like jack seven, jack three. The next best hand is aces without a spade. Two red aces is better than two black aces. But whatever, I guess this kind of person uses, even though it doesn't matter if you have a spade or not, it's just a call. No way you can fall. If I lose, I lose. And how big was that pot? Like 35. 3500? Nice, good pot. That's a gift. That is a gift, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the 1600. Yeah. <laughs> what? With a dominated flush draw? Yep. Yes! Yes! Tour of victories. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, we're rolling. Hey, Rain. Hi, Rain. Thanks for editing the videos. You're doing a great job. You're the best. All right, what's up, guys? We are here in Waco, Texas. Me and Chris drove down to spend the week with Jack uh, at his apartment. He goes to school at Baylor University here in Waco. Never know what you might see at the Baylor apartments. Me and Chris are in here working out. And then here's a guy, a wild bear on the loose. And he is almost done. How much more you got? Like nine weeks. Nine weeks left until freedom, until he is officially a professional poker player. <laughs> We're all very excited. Uh, but in the meantime, he's got to live here in Waco. I just made a tight fold. I'm playing online right now. <laughs> And I'm going to make the excuse that it's because I'm recording this video. We talked specifically about you can't call pocket fives in the small blind to a button open because you can't call a post flop on good boards for fives. And it was a good board for fives, but we had to fold because the big blind was invited to the pot. Literally exactly the same hand that we talked about. We had a really, really long conversation today that never really came to an agreement about small blind ranges versus a button open, whether we should be only raising, three betting, or folding, or if we should have a calling range. So we're still left confused. Still have no idea what to do. So <laughs> if you guys have any opinions on what to do uh, in the small blind when the button opens uh, with your small to medium pocket pairs, then please let us know. Show us the light. Uh, so we're here in Waco for the week. We are going to be grinding a lot online, uh, no casino here. Uh, there's also a legal room though, so we are going to head over there and get some cards in the air. They do only run one, two games, uh, so we don't want to spend too much time, uh, but they play, uh, I just four bet too big also. I shouldn't make videos while I'm playing. <laughs> uh, we are going to play some in the legal room so we can get some footage and get some hands down. Dang it, and he folded too. We four bet with kings. I usually go about, 2.7x. 2.75, yeah. And I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a difference. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. 
But this time I went a little more than three. Like 3.4. Shush. Anyway, we're going to be playing online. We're going to be playing on our PP Poker app as well. Uh, we've been managing it and playing in it a lot, which is kind of taken away from our time at the tables. Uh, so we're using this week sort of as a regroup slash boot camp style week where we're planning to play and study from dawn till dusk every day and so far it's gone pretty well we're on day two right now yeah. good day uh, today we studied for like four hours yeah uh, more intensive study than we done in quite some time yeah and nick has put in at least five hours of online today so yeah yeah and it's gone okay i think i'm up about two buy-ins which is better than losing for sure we've been playing one two today uh, so up about 400. Uh, we did want to address one thing. Uh, we've had some comments on our YouTube videos and on our Instagram. Uh, I guess trying to hold us to a higher standard as video makers that you know we should reach a certain quality with that film. And uh, we wanted to show you guys that we did uh, get a tripod. We picked it up at Walmart this week and we ate the whole thing before we used it. So here's the, the tripod for today. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the tables that we're timing out on. We're timing out on all of them at once. We got six tables of 1-2 running right now. Uh, we also ran six tables this morning and ran up a couple of 1K stacks. Uh, played some pretty big pots and only came out about one buy-in ahead. Uh, so pretty swingy session. This one's been a little bit more tame and I think we're up about another buy-in. So sitting on... Uh, about a two buy in profit for the day, so better than losing. Good luck, guys. It is Wednesday, just got back from school. We went to the Waco room last night. I played an interesting hand versus Chris, so I'm gonna go through it right now. Uh, we're playing some one, two, pot limit Omaha, and two players limp, we're playing six-handed, and Chris is in the small blind, and I raise from the small blind with ace-jack, queen-five, suited to the ace. I pot it for 10. We are in the big blind with jack, nine, eight, seven, double suited. We elect to three bet here pot to 35. We have a hand with a gap on the top, so we wanna play this pot heads up um, in position against Chris. So it gets back to him and he calls. We're about 270 effective to start the hand. Uh, and the flop comes king six five with the six five of hearts. <laughs> uh, I check and Jack C bets pot. Pretty good flop for us. We flop a wrap with a flush draw. So he checks it over to us. We should definitely be C betting here, um, prepared to stack off. We have about $270 um, behind. So an SPR about three, three and a half. So happy to get it in on this flop. He checks, we bet pot. I decide to check raise for pot. He uh, repots and we get it in. The turn is a 10 and the river is a brick six. So we miss leaving us with Jack high. So we end up with a pair of fives on the river and I tell Jack I got nothing. He says he's got nothing either and we turn it over and a pair of fives hold. So he's gonna take this one down, he stacks me, and I guess now he's moving to PLO. <laughs> he folds, he folds. We win 2,000 though. We win 2,000. Woo! $20,000 stack. $20,000 oh stack right here. Really good. Woo! He reloads. He reloads. We're playing some 1530 heads up PLO. It's been a crazy session. We were up 9K, down 6K, and now we're up 11K, so in an hour. <laughs> I mean, this is like basically nosebleed stakes. 
Playing 20k deep at uh, 1530. Woo! Let's go. <laughs> the guy just quit us. And we made 29,000. And how long? Three hours. Three opponents. We ended up stacking them all. And we went from a nine, we bought in for 9k total and ended at about 38k. 38k stack, so biggest stack of my life. 36 sessions. One of my friends is like, dude, do you have a toenail? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to touch it? I got that on film. <laughs> I, hope that, I hope that's like our ending clip this week. <laughs> my, my friend's like, hey, do you got a toenail? And I'm just like, 